All right, welcome to the first of its kind, World Changing Manufacturers Network. Lisa Ryan has her ears to the ground and her heart in the game. Get ongoing education and new connections right here with Lisa and the Manufacturers Network. Buckle your seat, listen, and spread the word. Here's Lisa. Hey, it's Lisa Ryan of the Manufacturers Network podcast, and I'm excited today to have as my guest, Chris Lukey. Chris is a podcaster, marketer, and self-proclaimed media maverick in the manufacturing industry. As the host of the podcast and video series, Manufacturing Happy Hour, Chris interviews leaders in the industrial sector to simplify and explore the latest trends and technologies impacting modern manufacturers. Chris recently left his sales job of 11 years with Rockwell Automation to pursue podcasting and marketing full-time. He now helps manufacturers and other industrial companies create lead-generating digital content and build dedicated customer communities. I had the honor of being on Chris's podcast a couple months ago, and then when I started looking up top manufacturing podcasts, guess who's there? It was right in the top 10. <laughs> so, Chris, it is an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. It's great to catch up again, Lisa. Thank you for having me. Loved having you on Manufacturing Happy Hour, and I'm excited to be uh, on the other side of the interview table today. Well, good. Well, you talked about uh, leaving your career at Rockwell Automation and now going into working with manufacturers full time. Share with us a little bit about your background, about your journey and, and really what led you to where, you're, are, where you are and what you're doing today. Sure. And, and I appreciate the great intro. You know, I, I'll, I'll try to tie, tie some things in and, and uh, weave things together with that. So like you said, I was working as a sales guy for Rockwell Automation for, you know, the greater part of a decade, for just over a decade. Um, for context, I'm sure a number of your listeners know, but Rockwell Automation, largest company in the world dedicated to industrial automation and information solutions. So programmable automation controllers, VFDs, large automation systems, Rockwell Automation does all of that. So I was working for most of that time in two different markets. I started my career in Houston. In Texas. And then for the latter half of that was working as a sales guy out in the San Francisco Bay Area. So as one might imagine, those are two very different markets. Um, in Houston, I was really serving more heavy industry, oil and gas, petrochem, and working with what I would say a more senior generation of individuals, people that had been at their companies for 20, 30 something years, hadn't really jumped around from company to company, valued the face-to-face -face meeting and the handshake. You know, that was that was working in Texas. Now I go out, go out to the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. I think everyone has their their visions of what the tech world is like out there, you know, 20 and 30 somethings in their hoodies behind computers, you know, cranking out the the latest code or whatever. And to be honest, the, the manufacturing industry kind of has some of those elements out there. It's a younger generation of workers um, that are making the decisions out there. And they're not typically sticking around a company for their whole career. They're going to jump every two to three years. With that being kind of the two different markets where my career had been, I really started podcasting and doing videos out of necessity. I had to think, okay, you know, I'm, I'm also a 20, 30 something. I'm 33 now. I was in my late 20s when I moved out to San Francisco. I'm like, how do I consume content? And I'm like, well, I did videos and podcasts. I'm like, you know, my customers that are my age aren't that different. So I'm like, why not? I communicate to them the way they're used to being communicated to, you know, I'll create videos, I'll create podcasts, you know, whether it's someone in that generation or, you know, someone older at the end of the day, that's a great way for me to be in front of my customers, even when I'm not in front of them. So it started out as a necessity for reaching the, the type of audience I was serving out in the Bay area, but it, it just evolved into a good sales and marketing practice after that, that not only helped me keep in touch with that generation, but others as well. And when you look at the technology, which one of the, the gifts, quote unquote, of COVID has been kind of pushing us into mm -hmm. being a lot more comfortable with tech. 
And maybe in the long run, it will make it uh, it easier to attract the younger generation into mm-hmm. manufacturing, because that's really part of changing the conversation of not only getting the guidance counselors in high school to suggest manufacturing and industrial careers, but also the parents, because you're looking at that high tech, these amazing environments that people are going into Mm -hmm. now that are a whole lot different from when I was in the welding industry, when it really was everything your mom ever warned you about in manufacturing, but really conveying that message. So what are some of the ways that you've seen organizations starting to take that? And maybe it is a compare and contrast between Texas and and San Francisco, but what's working? Yeah, so it's 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 a great question because a lot of re- when it comes to attracting and retaining talent, it's a, it's very similar to what I do with trying to help customers attract and retain customers as well. You're still marketing to someone. One, you're trying to get them to buy from you. The other, you're trying to get them to work for you. When it comes to the younger generation, I think it's take the things that are familiar to them. Um, something I reference a lot was the show How It's Made. People loved watching that because it's cool to see, you know, how it came candy bar is made or how a car is made. People like seeing that fast paced environment inside of a factory. Now you can take that and couple it with all the new technologies that now impact manufacturing. You know, you're right that referencing the difference between Houston and San Francisco is a great spot to start because when you think of heavy industry, those are, you know, some of the more gritty industries out there when you're out working in the oil field, for example. But even those industries are starting to adopt smart digital technologies that allow them to get more information and do their jobs more effectively. So that's the second part of my answer. You you know, you take the cool manufacturing process and you combine that with the technology, the analytics, the dashboards, the robotics, all the sexy stuff that's now part of it that kudos to guys like Elon Musk that have shown that hey, manufacturing a car is very similar to what we do in the tech industry. Uh, you know, So now that we have this convergence of tech and manufacturing, I think it's on the manufacturers to create some content around that that shows how cool, how hot, how flashy their business is and how it is a great spot to take your technical background, You know, whether you're just coming out of college as an engineer or whether you're someone that may have worked more on the software side for a while. There are a lot of opportunities in the manufacturing space that take advantage of the technology people are used to seeing. So what are you seeing the uh, recurring themes of the people that you've talked to or in your experience at Rockwell that are really keeping manufacturers up at night right now? Yeah, I think 2020 is a, a great or the end of 2020 is a great time to be having this conversation because, you know, not not to belabor the the COVID point any longer. But back in March, it was a shock to a lot of people that it's like, oh, shoot, I can't go meet with my customer anymore. I can't go have lunch with them. You know, a lot of the perspectives I'm sharing are from that of a career sales guy. But, right. you know, the reality was when when COVID hit, I, I, I don't want to say I was waiting for it, but I was prepared for it because I had started doing podcasting and video back in 2016. So I knew I still had a mechanism and a vehicle to reach out to customers. And really everyone had had tools they could jump on immediately at their disposal. Social selling through LinkedIn to a lot of people's credit. I think a number of people in manufacturing, whether that's companies or individuals have gotten better at that. People have been utilizing that as a tool out of necessity. Going into 2021, one of the things that is keeping people up at night is the fact that nothing happens at midnight on December 31st. It's not like this situation goes away. Like we're still, we're not going to a trade show right away, you know? So a lot of those in-person mechanisms that people were used to putting their marketing budgets towards, they don't really know what to do with that yet. So I think one thing keeping people up at night, it's how do I spend that money so that it goes to bringing in new customers, even if I can't do it in the ways that I was used to? And I might have to do it for another year or so. That's what's, I think, bugging people right now. Right. And it's interesting you talk about trade shows because you look at an industry that's really been changed by the pandemic because we're used to flying to Vegas, staying in a nice hotel, visiting all the vendors. And now we're doing this online. I was actually uh, speaking at an event as as an avatar where Mm -hmm. my little avatar could like walk through the grounds and go to the trade show booth and actually talk to the little avatars at the trade show booth. And a few years ago, this technology 
technology, number one, would have been terrifying and it would have mm -hmm. been completely unwieldy. And now it's just not only a different way uh, and a cool way of doing business, but it also allows manufacturers to bring a lot more of these their people to these events because maybe they mm -hmm. can't put everybody on a plane and send them to Vegas, but they have they can have them sit around the computer together, eating some sandwiches and taking some classes together. Yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. And actually, I'm glad you bring it up because that's another thing that I think people are still trying to wrap their heads around is how do I take advantage of a virtual trade show? Because you're right, the training opportunities there, no longer do you have to hand pick the three to five people that are going to get to go to Vegas or Orlando or wherever the conference is that year. You can literally have anyone sign up for those and take advantage of the trainings. On the flip side, and this goes back to what I do with manufacturers and, and helping them with their marketing and sales, there are tremendous opportunities to access the exact type of customer you're looking for at those events. You know, in the past, if you're at a trade show on the show floor, you're hoping the right person walks by your booth. Now, in some of these trade show platforms, I did this a couple of times this year, you can jump in, you can search for VP marketing, you can search mm -hmm. for technology director, you can search for automation and anyone with that, uh, you know, that title or that word in their title will pop up. Like it's almost cheating at that point because you're like, my ideal customer is at this show and I can find the ideal persona as well. So I think, you know, an, another big thing, it's like, Hey, how do, how do we take advantage of trade shows the right way? Because, you know, yeah, I'm looking forward to being back in, in front of people and, you know, going to the actual in-person happy hours again, but there's a lot of power to these virtual platforms from a training standpoint, as well as a sales and marketing standpoint that I think people are still really trying to get their hands around. Right. And taking advantage of it, not being afraid of the technology. I mean, it's certainly gotten so much easier today than it was just a few years ago, but there's still a lot of people in the workplace and maybe in your more of the Texas-based type of clientele that, well, mm -hmm. this is the way we've always done it. We don't need those darn computers where I'm not going to go on video and, and being okay with it. I think that the whole video thing has made us all a lot more human, kids and pets and everything else in the background that, that walks in regularly. But if you want to upgrade how you're seen in the market, use technology to mm -hmm. like be seen in the market. Yeah. <laughs> So if you're looking at ways, the, the whole point of this podcast is to create that network of mm -hmm. manufacturers and, hey, I can reach out to Chris for this, or I can reach out to this person for this. So, and I know that you have your own group on LinkedIn, but mm -hmm. share with us a little bit about um, what kind of support you offer, how people can get a hold of you, and if there's anything or people that you would like to connect with too, the whole circle. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give two answers to that. So the first thing is in terms of what I do to help people out, it's really, you know, we talked about figuring out how to take advantage of trade shows, how to repurpose marketing dollars. That That's where I help people right now, whether it's creating that first piece of content, whether that's developing a quarterly content strategy, figuring out how to post the right things to social media that don't just create engagement, but drive people wanting to buy from you. Those are the things I do along with helping people launch podcasts and things like that. So kind of a media centric approach to marketing that really helps someone help their customers tackle their ideal challenges through their, their content. So that's, that's really what I, what I do. I would say, uh, you know, the second thing to that is in terms of me helping people, people helping me, I kind of take the same approach to that. As you mentioned, I run a community as part of Manufacturing Happy Hour in addition to the podcast and the video series, Manufacturing Happy Hour has an industry community that it's, I mean, it's a, it's a LinkedIn group at the end of the day. That's all it is. It's a LinkedIn community of 300 plus manufacturing leaders that I always describe as the type of people that it's not always a CEO. There are some executives in that group. There are some people that lead teams, but you know, I also, I, I think the controls guy that's on the plant floor, that's not afraid to suggest something to leadership and saying, Hey, if we implement this, I know this will get the result you're looking to achieve. That's what, I, that's what I consider a leader. Anyone that's looking to take their career and their business to the next level. So those are the type of people that are in that group. And I always look at that as a way to connect people with the right folks. You know, what I offer isn't always what someone's looking for, but chances are someone's in that group that can help with web design, that can help with, you know, analytics, that can help with OEE. So it's all about creating that community 
uh, in that ecosystem of people that can help. And, and you know this better than anyone, creating the manufacturers network. So that if anyone wants to join that, the link to that is manufacturinghappyhour.com slash community that takes you straight to LinkedIn. But th- those are the ways that, that I try to help people within the industry right now. Yeah, and we're at a we're at a point right now that it's probably going to be a while before we can get back in person and shake hands mm-hmm. and and have those sales meetings. But on the other hand, you know, uh, platforms like these give you the opportunity to not only connect with people in different industries, but take advantage of what's working in a completely different industry than totally. you. And, and take that and implement that in your plant because trade associations are awesome and highly recommend that you join your trade organization. But sometimes that leads to this tunnel vision that it's like, this is what happens in our industry mm-hmm. where maybe you can learn something from somebody in a completely different industry and still be able to really move your business forward. You, you nailed it. Like learning, I always think learning from other industries, it's the quickest way to figure out what's working. Because let's be honest, everything I do with podcasting and videos in the manufacturing space, I have borrowed that from other industries that have been using that for years. It's all about repurposing it for the space that you're in. And whether it's, you know, you're in automotive and you're learning something from someone in food and beverage, quickest way to get great ideas that you can implement fast. All right. Well, we are getting to the end of our time together, and I know we will have many more conversations on different topics as this podcast grows. But what's the best way for people to get a hold of you, whether they want to just share ideas with you or bring you in to help them with their digital platforms? Sure. So I, I, you know, I'll just point to one spot. Um, And since I mentioned it before, I'll say it again. LinkedIn is a great spot. You can find me on there. But I would say just request to join the Manufacturing Happy Hour industry community. Again, that's manufacturinghappyhour.com slash community. It takes you straight to the group on LinkedIn. I have to approve anyone that comes in. Obviously, anyone listening to your show is going to get a pass because, you know, I know you're the type of person that uh, that would fit the mold of a manufacturing rock star. Yeah, that's that's the easiest spot to find me. And if, you know, if you want to talk sales, marketing after that, happy to keep those conversations going there as well. All right. Well, Chris, again, thank you so much for being on the show today. I'm your host, Lisa Ryan, and this is the Manufacturers Network Podcast. See you next time. See everyone. Thanks for listening. Hey, do me a favor. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe and give us a five-star rating. Also, feel free to share the podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can grow the network and connect more fantastic folks just like you. You can either go to the website at manufacturers-network.com or share the podcast on your LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or wherever you and your industry friends hang out. The bigger and faster we grow this network, the stronger and deeper community we will have. I appreciate you. Thank you.